Tony Han, a CEO of WeRide, joins us now for a CNBC exclusive interview. And we are very glad that you could make the time to be with us this morning. Tony, thank you very much. Please explain this expansion strategy and what do you hope to achieve from it? Okay, um, you know, the collaboration with uh, Betty Massive and uh, Renault Group is a kind of uh, unprecedented collaboration. And um, this is, to my best knowledge, the first fully operational high-level autonomous driving shuttle uh, in a basically deployed in a, uh, in, in, in a daily base. And to us, this is um, our first step to the European region. And uh, also, I do believe this is a great movement um, because think about the main purpose of develop autonomous driving technology is trying to make transportation safer, more efficiently, and more comfortable. And uh, if you have ever take ride in our autonomous driving bus, it's like a private cabinet. It's very comfortable. And we want to really revolutionize the trans public transportation. Public transportation is not only stand for uh, economically efficient, but should also stand for very, very comfortable and uh, much safer. And uh, we know Europe is, uh, you know, is currently an aging society, and um, well, we are facing a bus, shortage, bus driver shortage problem together. So we want to use the cutting edge autonomous driving technology to make uh, trans public transportation a great service to all the human societies. Therefore, you know, um, doing some business with autonomous driving technology and collaborate with uh, Betty Massive and uh, Renault Group and um, it's a great first step. Tony, you have partnered up with European companies in order to make these inroads into Europe. I'm just wondering how you're navigating some of the geopolitical challenges that Chinese companies are facing over there. I mean, it very much speaks to, I think, what you're doing. Some of the views out there that this is exactly how it's going to be, is that we're going to see more companies uh, across Europe and China partnering up, teaming up in order to address exactly what you're talking about. But I'm just wondering, uh, you know, how you are uh, navigating some of those challenges with regards to Europe and the pressure from the EU. Okay, if you look back to the human, uh, human history, and great companies have always been navigating across this across this kind of geopolitical tensions. I want to, um, you know, there's some story I want to share with you. Is like uh, Thomas Edison invented a light bulb, but light bulb not only lightening America but also lightening the rest of the world. And uh, you know, human society have experienced world war. And uh, I, I'm personally, I'm a pacifist. And I think to navigate this kind of uh, ge uh, geopolitical tension and uh, in the current era is like we are facing together and to do business in any region, like in European countries, in MENA countries, in Southeast countries, you have to comply with all addressable uh, 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 regulations and laws and, um, and also really contribute to the local society. Uh, that's our philosophy. We are doing business in all over all over of, of the world, uh, but we do respect uh, the local society. Want to help the, the economy development of the local society. The most important things we want to make this very very helpful autonomous driving technology available to the rest of the world. Right. Tony, I just want to talk a little bit about Nvidia's interest in your company. You know, it's not like uh, uh, they just came in a few weeks ago, uh, but they have been an early investor, so they've backed your business uh, from the start. Uh, and obviously, they upped uh, the stake that they had in your business, which led to that massive rally in your stock. Uh, what have your discussions with Jensen Kwong been in terms of this autonomous driving technology? And what's your pitch been to him in terms of, and also his expectations from your company in terms of where you want to take it? Okay, so you know I have been known Jensen since the beginning of this company in the year of 2017. At that time, I was at the Silicon Valley, and uh, 
Uh, I think um, Jensen is as a great entrepreneur, always push for the great technology. At that time, you know, we ride is one of the best autonomous driving technology company, and we didn't have any uh, actually real business, but we only have is like our great technology, and. Um, and that, and I think you know because of uh, our um, our the, the, the advance of our, our technology, our demonstration. I think Jensen made made his mind to invest us, and and then later, maybe seven years later, people knows like Nvidia is our shareholder. And to us, uh, you know, we have big dream to make this company a great company, and we really want to revolutionize the transportation with autonomous driving technology. To my mind, I think. Um, uh, driving is a tedious job, and it can be a hobby, but it shouldn't be a task. Um, and and re replace the tedious job with a machine is what our researchers or entrepreneurs are trying to do. Uh, therefore, I think um, we we will continue pursue the excellence in technology and gradually uh, make this technology uh, available to transportation business. So driving may be a hobby, but it. For many emerging markets, it's a major source of employment. And so, how mm -hmm. do you how do you think about that? The displacement of jobs that it can lead to if more and more transportation vehicles become autonomous. It's a very it's a great question. I'm so excited to answer this question. I think in the 21st century, one of the key questions to the philosophers is the relationship between mankind and the machines, more specifically AI. And there are lots of jobs like used to be taken by human being and solve the employment problem, and then will gradually taken by, by, by AI or machines. But think about in history, that ha that not the first time, like a programmable switch machine replaced the human operators. And uh, uh, washing machines re re replace the laundry, laundry workers. And now oh, I think for the mining mining business, they adopt technology a lot. Um, you know, it's I would say it's part of migration or shift of human jobs. Who you know, to me, you know, I don't want to be a taxi driver if I have other choices. I think there's always other jobs available, and I think we should put resource, inject resource, put lots of efforts to find really uh, more amicable and. Uh, uh, more enjoyable jobs for for the working class, and I think they are there. Like for the for example, labeling business, elder care, and um, also we want to do this gradually. And the key problem for the, our society, in many aging society, mm. is not because mm. of jobs, but about the shortage of uh, bus drivers or taxi drivers. So we want to use technology, autonomous drive, more specifically autonomous driving technology, to solve this problem. No, I completely understand, Tony, where you're coming from. In my mind, the sequence of, the, of that AI adoption is first you find the replacement, the reskilling, you solve mm -hmm. that problem, and then displacement would not be disruptive. What's happening mm -hmm. is exactly. the displacement is coming faster than the replacement. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to control the pace, right? You don't want to, like, in, in one night, every every taxi has been replaced with robo taxi. You don't want to do that. Uh, actually, uh, I think a progressive approach will be good. And so basically you gradually fill up the gap between the demand and the, the supply. But, you know, there's a, we all affect in aging society, we all observe this kind of phenomena. There's a currently a kind of shortage between demand and supply in terms of taxi driver and bus drivers. Actually in some society, it's become very big problem. Look at the, uh, some countries in Europe, and look at uh, Japan. You know, there are there simply have no bus drivers and taxi drivers. And look at their average age. We have to use uh, technology to solve this kind of uh, society problem. And uh, sure. for job replacement, we should do it gradually. Okay, your big markets are China, the U.S., UAE, and Singapore. I mean, that's where you hold driverless permits. But, you know, Sam already asked mm -hmm. you about geopolitical tensions and being caught in the crosshairs of uh, the tensions between China and the U.S. So I'm running out of time. So very quickly, uh, how do we see growth playing out for your business? And which are the key growth markets uh, where you see linearity in growth? Um, so... 
so basically all the aging society and with a, a, a kind of a high uh, very average uh, respect uh, uh, respect uh, relative high uh, high salary okay so uh, i mean taxes uh, salary so basically right. these are for market and uh, to do so you have to really uh, make your technology safer and uh, make the autonomous driving experience very comfortable yeah. uh, so that's what we're working hard on Good stuff, Tony. Absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for your time and breaking that all Thank down you. for Thank us. So Tony Han Thank from you. We Ride joining us from Guangzhou this morning.